I believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body. Part 7 Introduction The communion of saints. Let us understand our belief. In the communion of saints, in the Apostles' Creed, we profess, I believe in the communion of saints. Who are these saints that we are talking about? Are we talking about canonized saints like Francis Xavier, Thomas Aquinas, Saint Anthony and so on? No. When we profess our belief in the communion of saints, we are not referring to the canonized saints, but all of us who are faithful, and not just all of us who are living, but also all who have died. Thus, there is a communion among all of us who are faithful, the living as well as the dead. We are in communion with each other through prayers. We pray for one another. We pray for the living as well as the dead. and it is our hope that the dead are also praying for us this is the reason why we offer masses both for the living as well as the dead although they are dead we are still in communion with them through our prayers one baptism for the forgiveness of sins further in the nicene creed we confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins the sacrament of baptism the sacrament of confirmation and the sacrament of holy orders cannot be repeated all the other sacraments can be repeated the eucharist the reconciliation the anointing of the sick and so on we believe that the sacrament of baptism puts an indelible mark on our souls it places a seal a character on our souls in baptism we become the children of god and once we are baptized we will always remain children of god this character the seal can never be erased even if you leave the christian faith and then at the end of your life you regret and want to re-enter christianity you will not be rebaptized because your first baptism is still valid and you continue to be a child of god even during the period when you rejected christianity It is like the prodigal son who after spending all his father's money returns back to his father and says do not take me as your son but treat me as one of your servants even before the son completes his sentence his father embraces him and ask to cut the fatted calf the son's identity of being a son cannot be lost he cannot be treated as a slave Yes, he has lost the grace that his father was offering him, but his identity of being his son will always remain. Similarly, with baptism, our identity of being a child of God will continue to be there even if we wander far away and refuse the grace he is offering. The original sin. I believe in one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. Baptism removes all sin including the original sin and places an indelible mark on our souls signifying that we are one of God's family. What is original sin? Let us attempt a very brief explanation. Original sin is misunderstood by many of us. There is a difference between original sin and personal sin. Personal sin is when you commit a sin, when you knowingly and willingly indulge in some evil activity. So what is original sin before explaining what original sin is let us understand what original sin is not original sin is not the sin of your parents or your parents parents which is carried forward to you basically we call it generational sin in other words original sin is not the personal sin of your parents neither is original sin the personal sin of adam the first parent what was the personal sin of adam disobedience for adam disobeyed god and thought he was not dependent on god so original sin is not the personal sin of anyone why should you be responsible for the personal sin of someone else without being involved in it so now what is this original sin when the first human being was created that is when adam was created god placed him in a state of complete grace Adam was placed in a world of complete justice. The creation was full of grace when God created it and gave it to Adam and Eve. But with the sin of Adam, the state of complete grace was broken. This world of total justice was lost. 
original sin is this lost state of grace that you are born in original sin is this lost state of justice that you and i are born in that means you and i are born in a world where there is a tendency to sin you might not have committed a sin but the fact that you are born in a sinful world there is a tendency to sin in you this tendency to sin is the original sin it is the lost state of grace now when you commit the sin it becomes your personal sin baptism forgives you of all these sins and subsequently you need the sacrament of reconciliation Now blessed mother virgin mary was the only person who was full of grace and was free from the original sin therefore we believe that she was immaculately conceived we must know that every personal sin of ours contributes in the negative to this lost state of grace every time we sin the original state of grace which was given to us is being destroyed Thus, in order to re-establish this lost state of grace, in order to re-establish the original justice that God has given to us, we require the help of Jesus Christ, who was fully God and fully man, and went through His passion, death, and resurrection. What is resurrection? Resurrection is not a mere resuscitation of a corpse, like Jesus raised Lazarus and the daughter of Jairus to life. Lazarus and this little girl. were not resurrected their dead bodies were only reanimated with life lazarus was raised to life but he would have died again jesus will never die again now that he is resurrected if he has to die again then that means that his first death was not good enough thus jesus died once and for all and was resurrected the resurrection and the incarnation that is god becoming man are the greatest miracles we have what does descended into hell mean jesus after he died and before he was resurrected descended into hell this is what we profess in the apostles creed what do we mean when we say in the apostles creed that jesus descended into hell to answer this question we must examine the word hell Usually when we hear the word hell we immediately think of the place of eternal damnation for those who have rejected God in this life and have committed mortal sins without repentance. We think of the state where a person is totally in disunion with God. However, in the Old Testament there are other words hell, Sheol in the Hebrew text or Hades in Greek text refer to the place of the dead. the abode of the dead so everyone who died would descend to the place of the dead so abraham and all the prophets descended to this hell the abode of the dead thus this hell the abode of the dead was for both the good and the bad the just and the unjust the parable of the rich man and lazarus makes it clear to us in this parable a clear distinction is made between where the good resided in hell versus where the bad were the two were being separated by a gulf in the parable of lazarus and the rich man lazarus dies and is taken to the land of the dead and is comforted at the bosom of abraham the rich man also dies and goes to the land of the dead however he finds eternal torment being tortured in flames the rich man sees lazarus and cries out to abraham for relief however abraham replies my child remember that you were well off in your lifetime while lazarus was in misery now he has found consolation here but you have found torment and this is not all between you and us there is fixed a great gulf so that those who might wish to cross from here to you cannot do so nor can anyone cross from your side to us thus the abode of the dead has been divided into two in other words hell was divided into two one for the just and the other for the unjust why was this so why didn't the just go straight to heaven This is because the sin of Adam and Eve had closed the gates of heaven. The holy souls awaited the redeemer in the land of the dead or hell. 
Jesus offered the perfect sacrifice for all the people past present and future he descended into hell to liberate those souls who had long awaited their redeemer the gates of heaven were now open and these souls entered everlasting happiness what happened to those who were unjust they have to still believe in Jesus and wait for his second coming As can be seen in this figure this was Hades or Sheol prior to the resurrection of Christ the earth was considered to be round and when a person died he goes to the grave the body and the soul goes to Hades now the Hades or Sheol has two compartments the compartment for the saved that is Abraham's bosom or paradise and the compartment for the unsaved that is the place of torment and there was a great gulf fixed between the two all this was in the lowest parts of the earth or the heart of the earth so after the crucifixion death and resurrection of uh, christ the saved compartment of hades the people go to heaven that is their eternal home whereas those in the unsaved compartment of hades are eternally judged and reach the lake of fire so as can be seen in the picture hell sheol or hades before christ had two section the unfaithful were in the gehana and the faithful in the abode of the just or abraham's bosom and jesus descended into hell and did a jail break he did not descend into hell to deliver the damned but to destroy the hell of damnation but to free the just who had gone before him after jesus death the tombs were opened and the bodies of many holy people rose The abode of the just is not the same as purgatory which Catholics believe in where those who have died in Christ are purified before entering into the fullness of God's presence in heaven but the abode of the just which no longer has anybody in it and was a kind of a precursor to the purgatory is the Abraham's bosom where the souls were in the abode of the just were freed by Christ similarly all the souls which are in purgatory will finally make to heaven but the souls in purgatory are just getting cleaned up or purified for the wedding banquet sheol is equivalent to hades which is equivalent to hell and is understood in two areas the abode of the just or abraham's bosom and gehana the hell fire where the souls of the sinners are eternally punished after death between these two there exists an uncrossable chasm which separates those who have been faithful to the lord and those who are not The abode of the just or Abraham's bosom is known as limbo of the patriarchs and it was a temporary place where the souls of the just who died in the friendship of Christ were detained before Christ but could not enter heaven. So Abraham's bosom is precisely the holy souls who awaited the savior in Abraham's bosom whom Christ the Lord delivered when he descended into hell. Jesus did not descend into hell to deliver the damned or to destroy the hell but to free the just who had gone before him this part of hell or sheol that he descended is called the limbo or the limbo of the patriarchs and this is evident from the gospel passage which tells of the death scene of Jesus on the cross and behold the veil of the temple was torn the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose i want to take note of the word slept or rest at it may appear in some versions that rest is what we have come to understand as resting in limbo aside from this doctrine of the limbo of the patriarch there is another doctrine of the limbo of the infants it is a hypothesis about the permanent status of an unbaptized who die in infancy too young to have committed any personal sins but not freed from original sin while the catholic church has defined doctrine of original sin it has not uh, said anything about the eternal fate of unbaptized infants however the church recommends that these unbaptized departed infants to the loving mercy of god who is slow to anger and rich in mercy Sheol is not the same as limbo but it suffices to say that limbo is part of Sheol and while the limbo of the patriarchs has ceased to exist the limbo of the infants still exists being the state of unbaptized infants purgatory is a place of punishment where the souls are being purified in order to enter heaven whereas limbo is merely a place or a state of waiting and there is no pain that or suffering involved In conclusion Western Europe described the word underworld hell hades inferno sheol as divided into four distinct parts the hell of the damned 
the purgatory the limbo of the fathers or the patriarchs to which jesus descended after his death and the limbo of the infants unbaptized small infants the resurrection of the body the apostles creed we save i believe in the resurrection of the body what does the resurrection of the body mean in the christian perspective a human body is both a body and a soul for a human person to be called a human person he or she must have a body and a soul Christians therefore firmly believe in the resurrection of the body when Jesus died he rose body and soul from the dead however this body was a glorious body it was a mysterious body Jesus had to undergo a change through the resurrection it was not a mere resuscitation like Lazarus or Jairus's daughter it was not a mere reanimation of the dead corpse like Lazarus From the apparition stories in the Bible we know that this glorious body of Jesus could pass through walls the apostles thought it was a ghost the two apostles who were walking to Emmaus could not recognize the body yet some touched his body like Thomas who put his finger in the wounds this body was flesh and bones it could eat Jesus after his resurrection ate some fish yet this body could suddenly vanish thus this glorious body of Jesus is mysterious After the resurrection Jesus had undergone radical transformation of our body and soul he entered into glorious existence clearly Jesus appeared bodily after his resurrection but no longer bound to the laws of time and space we believe that our bodies too will resurrect because we believe in the resurrection of Jesus with our baptism we share in the passion death and resurrection of Christ Each time we receive the holy communion we remember the words of the Lord he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life eternal and i will raise him up on the last day therefore we look forward to a body and soul existence with our lord in heaven now to address some basic questions what will this resurrection be like what will be this resurrection involve when we die we believe that our soul leaves the body whereas the body is buried or cremated However we as individuals are a union of body and soul in order to be called a person we have to have a body and a soul therefore at the end of time we christians believe that the body will reunite to the soul in a glorious and a transformed way just like that of jesus this belief is encouraged to the assumption of the blessed mother mary we celebrate this feast on the 15th of august Since Mary who was without sin and full of grace after having completed the course of her earthly life was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory therefore she is an example to us we need to live a life of faith in this life looking forward to that glorious and transformed life in the heavenly kingdom at the end of time conclusion our hope in the resurrection and life everlasting helps us to live life fully here on earth and it changes our attitude to life If we are suffering and persecuted we know that our life on earth is but a journey and that our life is in heaven face to face with God but for that we must accept God in our lives and live an honest and true life a question to reflect do you live an earthly life knowing that there is a resurrection after our death here on earth does your belief in the resurrection change your attitude towards life here on earth